We've had much bigger dollar amount grants, uh, Title V grants and things of that sort. Um, but no grant has had the tremendous outcomes that we produce with SEPA. These internships put them into a different world and they see that they can function. We almost done. Sorry. Hartnell's a very old institution. I think it's been here since about 1920. Um, Hartnell is the educational hub of the Salinas Valley. The Salinas Valley is a vast rural agricultural area on the central coast of California. We are a federally designated Hispanic serving institution. If you look at the Salinas Valley as a whole, uh, I think over 60% of the households in this valley, um, the language spoken at home is other than English, mostly Spanish. So we have a fragile population. We have a population of students who are are not, they don't have advisors at home, they don't have mentors at home who've been through the college experience. About five years ago, faced a, a crisis in terms of um, the budgets that we were working with in the science program. Um, as you may know, to start up and keep maintain a science program, it's a very uh, technology intensive area. And uh, to offer our students um, something relevant, uh, something meaningful to them so that when they leave Hartnell and go on, they've, they've seen the right kinds of things, they're, they're prepared to, to move on to the next step, means you have to have state-of-the-art equipment, and it's very expensive. And in California, like I'm sure in a lot of other places, uh, we've, we've had basically just one budget crisis after another, and the money just hasn't been there. And while the college has been supportive and appreciative of the problem, they just have not had the resources to help us out. So. So the SEPA grant was a, a way that we could um, do a number of things. Here at Hartnell College, we are the recipients of um, a three-year grant from NASA through the United Negro College Fund Special Programs Office. And that grant is called the NASA SEPA, C-I-P-A, which stands for Curriculum Improvement Partnership Award. And the purpose of our grant is to infuse our engineering curriculum with project management training so that our students who go on to be engineers, whether it's in the space sciences or other fields of science or engineering, have that extra skill, that value-added component of project management training. We had a SEPA-1 grant and it significantly upgraded our astronomy department and we formed partnerships. It was a tremendous success. When the SEPA-2 RFP came out, and we saw it was focused on project management, we wondered, is this for us? We weren't, we weren't sure, we were a little apprehensive. Um, we did apply and we did receive the SEPA II grant to upgrade our engineering program. Turned out that project management was really exactly what we needed um, to upgrade uh, our program. Um, what we found is by training our students in project management, when we do send them out to the research institutions, they perform at a much higher level. They hit the floor running they're ready to perform with the, for the scientists and get results. Um, and we have institutionalized project management now in the form of the Project Management Institute. So each summer prior to going to their internships, our cohort of interns will receive the project management training, um, which significantly upgrades their skills and their performance levels. Part of the, one of the requirements of the grant, one of the important parts, was to incorporate project management training for our students and, and actually that meant for, for us as faculty and staff as well uh, because a lot of us didn't, didn't have project management in our backgrounds. So um, it, it's, it's meant then that by training students to be able to organize a project from every consideration from uh, budget to timelines to contingencies and, and uh, be able to set that up and then follow through and, and, and work as a team to uh, develop and refine that project plan has uh, been a, just a fantastic experience. In this uh, SEPA 2 project, uh, over the three years, we've placed 42 interns at eight different sites. Um, 
at various research institutions. So the, the projects have ranged from a minimum of six, six weeks to the entire summer. Some of our interns even continue, if they're returning Hartnell students, will continue working with their research mentors throughout the school year too. My name is Ricky Fernandez and I'm a junior. I transferred out of Harnell College and my major is physics. Ricky Fernandez is a superstar. Um, he wasn't always. Um, when we first met him, he was um, not so confident. He was a little shy, a little unsure of himself. Ricky is an interesting story because he's a very quiet young man, but, but there's a lot going on under the surface. So Ricky first did an internship at Fremont Peak Observatory, a project management um, type of internship where he learned to um, build a team, how to communicate in the team setting, um, and that kind of brought him out of his shell. Um, so he began to interact and communicate with the students to a much greater extent. My internship was at the Fremont Peak Observatory. I was there to help um, people come in and give them a brief overview of the universe and just help children look through the telescope and um, through the project management and the Fremont Peak Observatory. It helped me out to land the, the Musk Scholarship. <laughs> um, well, I think Ricky's a, a great example of what, um, what a student can accomplish with a little bit of encouragement and, and organization and to set up a, a plan for Ricky to follow through, which, which really began when he applied for his first uh, internship through the Fremont Peak um, Observatory Association. And uh, he worked with a group there. It, it's, it's meant, I think, for Ricky that he's, he's gained uh, confidence in his abilities. He's seen that what he uh, started out initially to plan to do has been able to accomplish. And then this culminated, of course, with his um, internship experience that he had last summer at um, the NASA Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It was a team effort here <laughs> from the faculty and staff to work with Ricky to, um, to really encourage him to apply for the NASA scholarship. You know, he, he wanted it. It's not like we dragged him into it. He definitely wanted it. But there's, a, there's deadlines and paperwork and all these other things. And that, those, are, those are hard hurdles to overcome for a lot of students and you really to be successful in the university environment you have to know how to reach out and tackle those challenges and that's something that a lot of our students don't have a handle on ricky was typical of that it's kind of personal but i'll just let you know so last year i was going through a real hard time my mom left my family my dad left to get her back my sister had a divorce lost her business and she came back to live in the house where my parents left. So there's all these financial problems. And then I just wanted to get out. And then one of the teachers offered me a home to live. It was Shannon. And that meant a lot to me. It was like, wow, this, you know, she doesn't know me personally. And she's able, she's like, well, don't give up your education. Because at that point, it's like, who's going to pay for all this? And then I'm here with no parents, you know, trying to, you know, all their bills, their car bills, their house bills. And what am I going to do? You know, I've, I've never been thrown that deep in a situation. And Shannon was there to like, at least offer it, you know. And then it kind of gave me the courage, well, you know, I'm gonna stand up. And then my dad came back, my mom came back, and things started getting better. And then throughout the whole time when I was like down, what would I do? I'd read a book, I'd read some physics, I'd read some math, I'd just, just to get my mind off it. And it was a lot to me in physics because in life, you can't like predict a lot of things. You don't know where you're going around. And then at least at lower physics, you can predict something. So you, have, you feel at least you have some control. You can be like, well, at least I know how this ball downs or rolls a ramp, or you know, if I throw a ball where it's gonna land. This is a young man for whom finances were a big issue. And now it's taken care of. And he's, you know, he came back from his internship just a, a changed young man, so. It's, it's good to work with students like that. My proudest achievement is to be at NASA, to be inside the engineering room where all the engineers are. You see all the TV screens, you see mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, propulsion engineers. 
And at the Kennedy Space Center, you see black people, I saw Puerto Ricans, I saw Asians, and they're all there working to get a rocket from Earth to, the, to space. And then watching that countdown go down, and then you, you hear that, the rocking, you feel the trembling, and you just see that rocket go up, and you see all the engineers, everyone in them, everyone in the whole building just happy and excited because it was successful. And that was my proudest because you saw people of all kinds of backgrounds, and you, who knows you know, what they had to get there. And then for that moment, no one cared about who they were, what they were from. They all just had like one moment. You know, they just, it was only just to see that go up. And then for that moment, it didn't matter, you know, what you were, but it was like what you believed in and everyone there believed in, you know, to get that, that mission done. Where do I see Ricky? Um, I would predict he certainly will have his PhD. Um, probably, I, I hope, in something like physics or astrophysics and he'll probably be working at a, at, a, at a big national laboratory. That would be my best guess. Um, yeah, doing some kind of exotic, exciting research, and I hope he comes back and shares it with me, yeah. yeah. You know, Hart now is, is the most critical institution in terms of the, the, the city's future. And the reason that is so is because so many young people are passing through here and that programs like this and the partnerships we have with folks like NASA really do prepare young people for the future. And what's even better news is we sneak up on people that young people that don't necessarily come from prestigious schools or backgrounds surprise everyone with the quality and caliber of their work. And that's important. Results are always an easy thing to sell. One of the important things I think in our being a UNCF special programs partner is that we bring a body of students that's uh, currently 64% Mexican American to this. And what I think is the leveler across opportunity is really two things. One is uh, self-image and belief that you can succeed. The other is the economic barriers to educational opportunities. With the funding here that you've provided and the project management aspect, we have taken what's been done already and spread it to another whole population. And we're nothing if we don't figure out how to learn from each other. So I think uh, this is a, not just a generous opportunity, but it's a major modeling opportunity. And Hart Nell is just really, really fortunate to get to be a part of that. It's really been, been a tremendous impact to this institution um, to uh, have two consecutive uh, SEPA grants. Um, we certainly hope we can continue to work with NASA funding in some way. Um, uh, and uh, like I say, I think we can truly say that through SEPA we have absolutely institutionalized developmental tools that benefit NASA's future workforce, the aerospace industry, and, and the related technologies. Mm -hmm.